How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to take a look at our next interface specific configuration, which is going to be layer two interfaces. So the concept is pretty straightforward. If you've got two interfaces that need to be able to communicate with each other in the same VLAN or same subnet, then you can create two interfaces that are both layer two and allow communication between those two interfaces, which gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the operations and how things work. So what we're gonna basically do is we're going to allow router 4 and router 5 to communicate with each other in the same subnet. So we'll have to do a little bit of reconfiguration on the routers as well, but basically the idea is that we should be able to allow router 4 and 5 to communicate with each other inside of the same subnet, and the Palo Alto firewall will be able to sit in between the two and provide policy and things like that. So let's go ahead and get this party started. So we're going to go ahead and pull this guy up. We're going to go to our interfaces tab, and for interface eth1 slash 2, we're going to go ahead and from the drop down, we're going to say this is a layer 2. And right now, we don't have a VLAN created. So I'm going to do the configuration on Ethernet 1 slash 2 from the interface. And 1 slash 3 will go a little bit differently. So on here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say we're going to create a new VLAN. This guy will be, we'll say VLAN uh, 45. And there's not going to be an SPI or a VLAN interface. And we're not going to create an SPI, right? So we, we could create an SPI, but we don't have one created. So we're going to go ahead and just click on, okay. An SPI or a VLAN interface would allow you the Palo Alto firewall to participate in routing. So, or be an IP address that's pingable with inside of that VLAN. So there's been times where, you know, if you've, you've got two PCs that are in the same VLAN, but they're not communicating with each other, you can add a, an SPI or a VLAN interface or you know, whatever you want to call it, to the, the switch or the router or whatever and create an IP address on that device and that will allow you to ping to see if there's a communication error. So basically that's what you would do there. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and that applies that to that. And I'm going to go to the VLAN tab and right now you can see that there's no VLANs created, right? That's mainly because of the fact that we haven't committed the config, even if we refresh it, we can come in here, we can add, and if we wanted to, we could add a VLAN. So this would be interface VLAN name, if we wanted to create an interface VLAN, but we could assign it to a specific VLAN. VLAN 45 is the VLAN number we could assign to this. But this is where if you want to create a uh, VLAN interface, if you want to just create, uh, if you want to go to the VLANs tab, VLAN 45 already sits here, right? So. Just so you know, the VLANs here is the is this is the broadcast domain, right? The layer two port, and on the interfaces tab, on the VLAN, this is your interface VLAN. So if you want to create a default gateway for your VLAN, you would create it here, and then you would map it to the VLAN of 45. So with that being said, we're going to come down here to VLANs. If we want to create another one, we just click and create, give it a name, and then we'd be in good shape. So I'm going to go back to interfaces, and then on Ethernet, we're going to click on one slash three. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this layer two, and then we're going to say that is VLAN 45. Now, security zone, we're, I'm not going to hit that right away, only because of the fact that I'm not going to, just for demonstration purposes. Click on OK, and that's pretty much where we're at there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on commit and commit that config. So that's going to work. While that's working, I'm actually going to click on here, click on router 5 and router 4, respectively. Put these guys in order so it's easier to work with. So we're going to come up to global config, do show IP interface brief on, oh, they are configured already. Okay, cool. So 5 is ready to go. Show IP interface brief. So 10.1.5.5. So we're going to come up here to interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address is going to be 10.4.5.5 slash 24. Okay, so that's good to go there. We're going to come back over to the PA, and we should be just about done, which we are. And once that's done committing its config, oh, and we know it's working. You might be like, how'd you know, Rob? Well... Because I see a, an EIGRP adjacency configured between these guys. And we can see that 
on these guys that we can see communication happening and we're in good shape there. So if we click on the VLANs, we can see that the VLANs are there and all that good stuff. We can't really see any MAC addresses, but we can see the interfaces are all good. I don't believe there's any additional information off to the right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're good to go there. So if we come back over here to this router, we're in router five. If we do a show ARP, we should be able to see router five or router four coming across. And if we were to do a show IP EIGRP neighbor, we have, well, it's kind of working. We have a queue count. Router four is do show IP EIGRP neighbor. This guy, there's a queue count. That's not that big of a deal, but we can see it's going back and forth. If we do a ping to 10.4.5.5, it uh, it doesn't pass traffic. And so what we can do now is we can go back to the interfaces. On the, on the interfaces, let's go to one slash two. And then what we're gonna go do is on the security zone, we're gonna go ahead and create a new zone. We know that the zone is going to be layer two. We're going to create here, we'll call this VLAN 45. And we're going to go ahead and add another interface. We're going to add one slash three. Click on, click OK. So we have that, we're going to click on OK. So now we should have both Ethernet one slash two and one slash three inside of the security zone of VLAN 45. And so we should be able to go ahead and commit that, commit that again. Now that, that, that is a layer two security zone. Okay. So, you know, remember intra zone communication should be allowed by default. So what should end up happening is there's some control plane traffic going back and forth and stuff like that. But uh, as it sits right now, that's basically where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and pause until that's got, that's finished. Okay. So the security zone is now applied. And if we come back over here, we can see that if I show IP EIGRP neighbor, the queue count is now gone. If I go back to router, uh, if I hit the up arrow and ping, the ping goes through. So we know that it's working the way that it needs to because pings are being passed back and forth. The zone was applied, so we didn't have the zone applied. Communication didn't work. We applied the zone to both interfaces. Pings work, so we're in good shape there. So that's basically how you want to take into consideration what's happening. Now, if we come over here, the monitor tab, and we click on, we can see that, um, we can see, okay, so a connection that I have, so I did create a site-to-site -site VPN between a couple of devices a while back, and um, this is what you see right here. So we can see that another device is trying to form a VPN connection with, with us. No big deal there. Now if I come back over here and I hit the, the ping and we refresh this, we can see that the ping traffic is going back and forth between those guys. And if we get an EIGRP hello somewhere in the process, it should detect, oh, maybe. I don't know if it's actually going to, but the ping worked all day long. So we can come back over here, we can look at the session browser, and we can, we can see pings going back and forth. So we know that ping packets are working. In other words, the Palo Alto firewall is seeing the communication between the devices, and it's able to inspect it. We're seeing Ike communication coming in from router six, so we know that's working. So that's basically where we're at. Now, the question you might have is, can you go in there and block ping? You could block ping, you could. Um, am I going to do that? No but the option is there if I wanted to. But that's layer two connectivity on a Palo Alto firewall. So we did layer two VLANs on that and we're in good shape there. I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with me in this video and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for stopping by guys.